uh, welcome at uh, Sri Bala University. Today we've got a very special guest who has flown down all the way from the uh, United States. Mr. Rishad uh, Tabakawala is here. Uh, Rishad heads the uh, Publicist Group uh, in the Growth and Strategy uh, Division. He's the Chief Growth Officer for Publicist Group Worldwide. And he's uh, recently also authored an incredible book that has been uh, uh, anticipated worldwide. We've been waiting for it to be published very soon. And um, a special message going out to all the alumni and students of Shibala University all across the world. Uh, keep an eye on this uh, new book and uh, we'll have the ship to share a little bit about himself, uh, his personal journey, his professional journey, and uh, request him to focus on the book so we can get more to learn. Richard, uh, how do you like uh, this trip uh, to Shibala University? Oh, it is fantastic. It's a privilege and honor to be here. And it is extraordinary to see both the campus and uh, the ability to speak to a thousand very smart uh, students, uh, many of whom are right now even videotaping this. So uh, it's a privilege and uh, I'm very glad to be here. Welcome to the campus again. Uh, Richard, talk to us a little bit about your personal journey. Um, and so that we get a kind of glimpse into the person Rishi. Sure. So I grew up in uh, Mumbai, Bombay, India, and uh, spent most of my first 21 years in the city. I went to Campion School and then I went to St. Xavier's College where I got a, a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics. Uh, then went to the University of Chicago to get an MBA in Finance. Uh, got one job when I came out of school because I did not have a green card. I joined an advertising agency called The Urban Act, which I thought I'd spent two years in, get a green card and get another job. And 37 years later, I'm in the same building, uh, which is a testament to either loyalty or unemployability. I don't know what it is. But um, this company grew over the years. And we eventually got bought by the Publicis Group, which is a very large French holding company, in 2002. So the last 17, 18 years I've been working for Publicis Group. And the Publicis Group has, over the years, bought companies which your um, students and alumni may know of, uh, like a Digitas, or a company like Sapient, or a company like Epsilon. So we now have about 80,000 employees around the world. 55% of our revenue is digital. But this is the most important thought. Of the 80,000 people, our largest number of employees are in the United States. We're about 55% of our businesses. But our second largest number of employees, with 20,000 people, is in India. Wow. Good stuff. Because if you need smart people and engineering and a whole bunch of other people, there's only one place to go. That's it. Amazing. Uh, for people who are watching this uh, all across the world, uh, some of me know, uh, Rishad, you've been uh, called as the oracle who can see things, uh, especially in the business, in the business, in the business and the transformation world. Tell us how do you how do you see things? I mean, how are you preparing yourself? Give us a little bit of tips, and then maybe you segue into the book sure. as to you know how do you share insights there. So one of the important things about trying to predict the future is you have to read a lot about today and yesterday as well as try to anticipate the future. And, you know, innovation, I gave a definition today for strategy, and strategy I call future competitive advantage. Uh, and as a result, I have wanted to always focus where would the future go so my company and myself could be successful. Yes. So that was one. But another uh, definition now, there's a different word which I didn't talk about today, which is innovation. So what is innovation? because I was also the innovation director of my company. So innovation is basically fresh, insightful connections, mm. which is how you connect dots between things that are different. And in order to do that, you need to always expose yourself to lots of different stimuli. So I make it a point to spend an hour every day learning new things. I get up in the morning, I read them. I make it a point to watch at least one movie a week. I try to read at least one book a week. And that allows you to see models. And then I obviously expose myself to whatever the latest technology is. But through this, the key thing that I'm keeping in mind all the time is people. 
what do human beings do, not what machines do. Because if you only think about the math, and I have a degree in mathematics, as I said, you often lose the meaning. So in order to keep the future, you have to not only think about the machines, but you have to think about the man. Wonderful. And I shall talk to us a little bit about the book itself, sure. uh, what it's why you do, why you're writing this book right now, and how can the alumni get hands on it? So the, the, for many, many years I've written a blog, for many years I've spoken, and people said you should write a book, but uh, I did not write a book for a couple of reasons. One is I did not have the time. Mm -hmm. We had young kids, I was working, and I wanted to, if I decided to write a book, to actually study and work hard at writing a book versus just write something on the top of my mind. And so I was fortunate at a particular stage in my career, my company gave me enough time, at least half time, to do a lot of research, which I did over two, three years for my book. And these were to answer 12 questions that I've been asked all over the world, which I, when I gave answers, these 12 questions come, whether you're old or young, man or woman, regardless of the industry or regardless of the country. I get exactly the same 12 questions, yes. right? It's not necessarily one person asking me the same 12 questions, but these are some of the questions. One question will be, how do I extract meaning from mathematics and data? How do I not let data you know, crush me? Number two is how do I gain purpose from work? How do I get meaning from work? A third one is how do I keep learning? How do you keep learning? So how do you increase your mental operating system? Or how do you manage time? Or how do you lead with soul? So I eventually put all of those together in a book where you can read any chapter in any order, right? And that's what the book is about. Now is how to get it or get access to it. You know, we chatted. The book will be available in India on December 25th. It'll be available in most of North America on Jan 28th. And it'll be available everywhere else in the world on February 20th. You can pre-order it today by going to Amazon or any other place. If you go to Amazon and put my first name, last name, my book shows up and you can pre-order it. But as importantly, I will share with you the opening of the book so the alumni can actually see the entire opening of the book, including the preview, uh, I mean the foreword, the various people who have praised the book, uh, which includes many CEOs, etc as well as a link where they can basically get free videos and other things. So hopefully they'll be more equipped to decide if they want to buy it or not. Lovely. Great. Thanks, uh, Shred. I think that's that's going to be a, a, an early Christmas gift for all the alumni of uh, Sri Balaji University of the World who are watching this. And we have, I've ordered my personal copy already, uh, which, is, uh, which is going to be shipped to me in a year or so. But again, congratulations, Thank you. Uh, Bishop, for your first book. And hopefully this is uh, one of the first uh, of many. Well, I hope it will be the first of many, if many of you are alumni buy the book, then I'll get another book to write. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Richard. Thank, Thank you. you for taking time.